chapter 10. Mark chapter number 10. The Lord's going to do something. <clears throat> Mark chapter number 10. This is a story this morning that I've read many times. And a lot of times you read something and you get a you get a the gist of it. But when you begin to dig in the Word of God and begin to see the things that God wants us to see through the Scripture, then we learn a lot more than you know than than we might know by just reading the story. Now, this is a story of a of a blind man. And there's many things go along with this story of a blind man. You think about yourself. Now, everybody in here, as far as I can know, can see pretty good. Some of us. I have to have four eyes to see the vision of two, but I can see. And I began to think, how would it be if I could not see? How would it be if I could not see? Well, after I've seen all that I've seen in the, in the world, it would be very disappointing and disheartening if I could not see the beauty around me. I see the, you know, I see the beauty of the mountains this morning, how beautiful they are. I've seen the beauty of the seas. I've seen the beauty of foreign lands, and, and I enjoyed that. But what would it be if I had never seen? I wouldn't miss all of that as much, would I? Because I'd never seen it to start with. So this man that was uh, blind, he had a father named Bartimaeus, and historians say that he, possibly this was genetic, and he was, and, and his father was blind also. But either way, this man could not see. So let's read the story this morning. We'll go as the Lord will lead us. <clears throat> and they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Now they were going... Uh, out of Jericho and, uh, and on the roadside, on the way in, uh, there was a man there. Now, why was he there? He was there begging because that was his only means of survival. Uh, he was there begging because that was where the most traffic was, was at. You notice beggars today, uh, they'll be where the most traffic is at, where they have the opportunity to gain the most. Uh, they'll be at the, at the intersection of a highway. They'll be at, at an off-ramp. And what are they doing? They will work for food. They're begging is what they're doing. They're begging. And whether they need it or not, that's, you know, that's, I don't know, but they're begging. And so people that beg, they go to the place where there is the most help to be had. And I'll tell you, Bartimaeus was at the place where the most help could be had. Now, this was a daily routine for, for Bartimaeus. I imagine his routine would be something like he would get up in the morning and he would dress himself as best he could and probably whether someone led him there or whether he went by himself, I don't know. But either way, he made his way to his daily place of survival, his daily place of begging. And there he would beg for enough money to feed himself and to to help himself for one day, and he daily he was a beggar. He was helpless, he was hopeless. As he sat there by the wayside, begging now, over, in the, uh, over in the Middle East, over in Israel, when we were over there, I saw many people begging. And in Jerusalem, in the city of Jerusalem, they would sit there by the, you know, by the, uh, on the wayside, wherever they could find traffic, and they would sit there and they would beg. They would beg for money. Just give me, you know, just give me a few coins, whatever. And uh, of course, we, you know, we did that. We give them something because that's all they knew to do. This is all Bartimaeus knew to do. He was just looking for help from somewhere that he might survive another day. As we read on him, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now Bartimaeus was, was only blind with his eyes. His other senses were probably uh, much better because of his blindness. He heard well. Uh, his sense of, of feeling was well. His sense of, of, 
of hearing was good. And, and so he sat there and he heard that it was Jesus that was coming his way. And so when he, evidently he had heard of this man before. Because if he'd just been sitting there and anybody with a, you know, anybody passing by and he knew many of them's names, he probably didn't cry out to them uh, by name. But he said when he heard it was Jesus coming by, he began to cry out. He began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And of course he knew the man. He'd heard how that probably Jesus had done miracles before. And he heard that Jesus, you know, was doing that and could do it for him. My friend, it's one thing for me to believe that Jesus can do miracles for someone else. Many times it's easier for us to believe that Jesus can do miracles for someone else than it is for us to believe that Jesus can do miracles in our own life. And I'm telling you, He's still a God of miracles. Amen. He's still a God can, that can do the impossible. And He still does. And blind Bartimaeus says, He began to cry out. He cried out to Jesus, Have mercy on me. And you know what He was doing? He knew, he, I believe He had faith in Christ. He knew that Jesus could do something for him. Verse number 48, And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now the naysayers ran, maybe the other beggars around him, maybe the other lame people or whoever was around him that was begging. Be quiet. Be quiet. Don't yell at him. Be quiet. We want to hear him. Be quiet. But over the cry of their voices, he cried even the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Maybe the crowd that was following him looked over at him and said, Be quiet. Leave him alone. But he in his persistence, he in his faith, cried out to Christ, cried out to Jesus. Now what did this do? We see here in verse number 49, And Jesus stood still, walking in with a crowd around him, a great following that he had with him, some of them there out of curiosity, some of them there because they loved him, some of them there because they just wanted to follow the crowd. But when Jesus stood still, everybody else stood still. Everybody else stood in silence when Jesus stopped. Why did he stop? All the probably a lot of people around him making a lot of noise. But when someone needed help, Jesus stood still. He heard him. Now I'll tell you something, friend, today. When you need help of God, Jesus will stand still and listen to you. Now I don't know what many of you may be facing this morning. I don't know what problems you might have. You don't know all the problems that I have. You know one. But my God's big enough to take care of it, amen. I want to tell you something this morning. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know you struggle. But Jesus does. Amen. Jesus knows your sorrows. Jesus knows your pain. Jesus knows your heartache. And he'll listen to you. So as Jesus stood still, <coughs> And he listened to him. Here's what he said. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. He said, call, call that man. Call him. I see him over there. Call him. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. After all them, after all them telling him to be quiet, Jesus stood still and said, Call him. And so him being blind couldn't see, but he could hear those people around him said, Be of good comfort. He's heard you. Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. So the blind beggar, as he sat on the wayside, and as he heard that Jesus was passing by, he cried out, Lord, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now what did he do? Did he just say, sit there? No, surely he didn't call me. Surely that wasn't me he was talking to. Out of all these people, I've been crying to him, but he didn't hear. Surely he didn't hear me. No, he didn't do that. What did he do? He rises up. He takes off that old garment that he had on. 
Friend, I see many pictures here. I'll never get it all to you today. I see many pictures here of the work of Christ, of the, of the, the desperation of a sinner. But he rises up, he casts off that old garment. Why does he cast off the old garment? Now that's his old tattered, raggy uh, shawl that he wears about him, his outer garment, his outer cloak that he has on him. He casts that old ragged thing off because he doesn't want any hindrance to get to Jesus when he starts going through the crowd. And so he cast it off and came to Jesus immediately. He came to Jesus. Now how did he get? He heard his voice. Even though he was blind and couldn't see him, he heard his voice and he went toward that cry. He went toward that voice. My friend today, sometime, now listen, it'd be like you and I walking around in the dark and trying to find someone. I've been out in the woods at night and it gets real dark out there. And I've been out in the woods at night and somebody get lost. Or even in the daytime. You can't see that person, but you know what? You holler out, hello! And you wait. And you, what are you doing? You're listening. What are you listening for? Them to holler back. So blind Bartimaeus had been hollering for somebody he couldn't see, but he knew was out there. I've been out there with me, and I knew we're out there. Most of the time it's me that's lost and wanting them. And I was one needing help. And guess what I did when I figured out I was lost? I started hollering for help. Help! Uncle Saul, Uncle Paul, where you at? Daddy, where you at? And then I'd stay and I'd listen. And some, so I'd listen real closely. I wouldn't hear nothing sometimes. So what would I do? I'd get up, I'd go to the highest place I could find, and I'd cry out again, Daddy! Uncle Paul! And I'd hear one of them say, now they wouldn't call me back by name, I'd call them back, they wouldn't call me back by name. But they'd say, Hoo! Hoo! Like a owl out in the daytime or something. Sometimes they wouldn't do that, sometimes they'd just take, and I learned that later on, you don't yell in the woods. If you want to get somewhere, you take a stick on a hollow log and you, you communicate that way. But anyway, I call, and guess what? I would find them because I heard their voice. I heard their voice and I would go to them. Even though I couldn't see them, I'd know the direction to go because I heard their voice. Now, Brother Max, this blind Bartimaeus, he was blind. And Jesus, Jesus cried out to him, let him come over here, send him over here. He said, come to me. And blind Bartimaeus, he heard that voice and he began to walk that way. With all the confidence, with all the assurance, even a blind man could have, with all the assurance, he came to Jesus. Because he knew that that was the one that he was looking for, that was the one that he was asking for help for from, and that was the one that could help him. And he said, I'm going to you. And he went to Jesus. Immediately he got up, cast that garment off, and he went to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, will, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? Now Jesus knew what he needed because he's the omniscient God, the all-knowing God. He knew what he needed, but he wanted the blind man to understand what he needed and to ask for what he needed. Sometimes we, the Bible clearly says we have not because we ask not. And this blind man was not asking anything, you know, other than to be healed. He, I don't read anywhere. Let me read it to you. The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Now, he didn't ask for a million uh, dollars. He didn't ask for a lot of gold. He didn't ask for a lot of wealth. He didn't ask for any other kind of healing. He said, Lord, I just want to see. I just want to have my eyes open so I can see. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. He followed Jesus wherever he was. He followed him in the way. Now, did it mean that he followed Jesus? He may have for a little bit. But I believe this blind man got up, and guess what? I don't believe he ever picked up that old garment again. I don't find where he picked up that old garment again because that old garment was a sign of his 
being a beggar as he sat there. He had that old garment on, and it was a sign of him being a beggar. And I believe probably when he got by, he walked past that and never picked it up again. Why? Because he wasn't blind any longer, thank God. He could see because of the grace of God. He could see. A friend, I was lost and undone. I had on a, I had on a beggar's garment. I, was, I had sin all around me. I had sin all over me. But thank God when I come to Jesus, when, I, when he called to me, listen, I wasn't looking for him. No doubt Bartimaeus didn't go down there that morning looking for Jesus. But when Jesus passed his way, thank God, he realized who it was and he ran to him. Little boy, eight years old, Brown Chapel Baptist Church, right there at the altar. I wasn't looking to get saved that night when I got saved. But I want to tell you something. When I was under conviction of the Spirit of God, when I heard the call of the Savior, I knew that I needed Him, and I went to Him. And guess what? I've not picked up that cloak of sin anymore. I'm no longer a sinner, but I'm saved by the grace of God. That blind Bartimaeus, he was no longer, he was no longer blind. Matter of fact, he was no longer a sinner, but he was saved by the grace of God. The Bible said, Thy faith hath made thee whole. So he was saved by faith. He could see by faith. Friend, I'll tell you this morning, when Jesus passes by, it'll make all the difference. And I prayed over this message today, Jesus, will you please pass by? Will you please pass by our way today? I do not take it for granted, friend, when Jesus comes to us at the house of God because he doesn't have to. Jesus didn't have to pass this way this morning. I'm glad he did, sister. I'm glad he did. I'm glad I feel his presence, Brother Venus. I'm glad I feel his touch today. He didn't have to, but thank God I'm glad he did. And I'm glad he still is. And let me say something to you today. There's churches all over that Jesus won't pass by today because he's not welcome. But I'm telling you, he's welcome. I'm glad that he's here. When he passes by, it makes all the difference in the world. It made the difference in, in your life. It makes the difference in the life of a church. It makes the difference in the life of a family because it's Jesus, friend, that can make the difference. So let me give you a few things real quickly and we'll be through. When Jesus passes by, what happens? Number one, when Jesus passes by, people notice. When you come to church this morning, you notice if Jesus meets with us. And he does, and people notice, and, 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 and it makes them excited about, about being saved. When Jesus passes by, people notice there was a crowd because of Jesus was there. Now, there's not such a big crowd here this morning because of, uh, because of the uh, snow and ice, but I remember when this was a big crowd. Hey, man, well, who's here this morning? But you know what? A big crowd is, is beginning to form in the church. A lot of people are coming. Hey, man, why? It ain't because of me. It's because of Jesus. Hallelujah. When Jesus shows up, hey, man, people want to see. People want to know. People want to hear. When Jesus comes by, friend, people notice there's something special there. There's something special at the house of God. Why? It's because of Him. Amen. It's because of Jesus. His people noticed they wanted, uh, they wanted to hear and they wanted to see. Now I've been, I've been around you know, meetings before where the Spirit of God moved. Or Jesus passed by every night and, and the meetings began to grow because people wanted to see what God was doing down there at that tent. Been a tent meeting a few times. Been, matter of fact, been several of them. You might start off slow. But God moves on anything, friend. God moves on any meeting. God moves on any church. And, and it, it, it gets people's curiosity up, if nothing else. But it's they're drawn to where Jesus is at. Everywhere Jesus went, he attracted the crowd. From his birth, when the, when, the, when the shepherds came to see him, to his death where they were gathered around the cross, he attracted a crowd. I'm telling you, where Jesus is, there will be followers. There will be people that want to see who this man Jesus is. 
So when Jesus passes by, he brings also great excitement. Some of you don't look too excited this morning. Amen. If everybody would smile at me real big, I'd, I'd feel a whole lot better. And some of you still ain't going to. Maybe your face is froze like that. Maybe you can't. But I'll tell you something. If you begin to think about who Jesus is, it ought to bring a smile to your face. It ought to make you excited. I got excited coming to church this morning. Lord, come my way today. Oh, friend, it brings excitement. It will cause excitement. The blind man, the blind man was excited. You know, no, no doubt he sat there every day. He sat there every day. And he'd hold out his little pan. And he'd hold back, hold, hold out his little pan. And he'd, he'd sit there and he'd pass his little pan. Alms! Alms! I'm blind. Alms! All day long he'd sit there and people would throw something in. Once in a while he'd survive that day. But when he heard this crowd are coming, no doubt he sat there wondering, wondering who this is, what, what's going on here. And I, maybe someone in the crowd said, Jesus, ask him a question. He said, that's Jesus. Oh, that's Jesus. And he got up and he, hey, Jesus, Jesus. <coughs> Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And probably if there was something he could climb up on and stand, he cried out the more, Jesus, Jesus, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Blind as he could be, but he got excited. Oh, this Jesus, I know what he did to that lame man the other day. I heard about that, how he made him to walk again. I heard how he done that other blind man, how he made him to see again. And that deaf man that used to sit here, he's not here anymore because he, got to, he began to hear and he don't have to beg anymore. That cripple that sat here next to me, he couldn't work, couldn't do anything. Jesus came by and healed him. Oh, my friend today, let me tell you, he got excited because Jesus is coming by. So he stood up in faith and he called out to Jesus and Jesus said, bring him to me. So he jumped off of there and there he went. To, listen, he was excited because Jesus come by. Friend, I'll tell you something. When we get real excited when Jesus is around, you watch things pick up in our lives. Amen. You watch things pick up at the house of God when we get excited about going to church and oh, Jesus is going. Hallelujah. Jesus is going to be there this morning. I've had a rough week, man. Things ain't went good. Somebody asked me this morning. How's your week going? I started to lie and say, well, it's... And then I said, no, it ain't been worth a flip. I've seen everybody in 18 counties come in the grocery store and buy the last apple or banana and think they's going to starve to death. And the next thing that happens is snow's a foot deep at the house almost and, and I get up and go to work like I have to do. And guess what? By the time the door's open, there's something out there wanting in the door to buy something else. I'm looking, why don't you stay at the house? And I don't know what they did with all that food. Record sales on when is snow, Wednesday? Wednesday and Thursday, yeah. Record sales was had on Tuesday because everybody thought it was going to be on Wednesday. Guess what? It didn't come on Wednesday like it's supposed to. And guess what? They come in there. I swear in the world are you all getting this money? And they've come barreling in there. They's all excited about what a snowflake. And then guess what happened? It snowed and, and back to normal, back to a normal day on, on, on Thursday. Well, almost normal. But some of them same people bought $300 worth of groceries. I seen them back in. I thought, what in the world did you all do with all that? And then they buy it all. Power goes out. What are you going to throw it all out? Well, that's something to get excited about, ain't it? But you get people to start talking to them about Jesus and they don't seem to get excited too much. I don't know what kind of week you've had. You may have had a, you may have had a terrible week. It might not even been weather related. It might have been your family. It might have been your children. It might have been 
uh, problems at home. It might have been a car breaking down. I don't know what it may have been, but you might have had problems. But I'll tell you what, this might make him problems disappear at least for a short time and get your mind where it ought to be. It's Jesus at the house of God, and it'll be a good thing when we get to the place where we're excited, and I believe you are, but when we all get real excited about Jesus coming to the church and us going to be there to see him. Amen. You're looking at me again that way. Come on, smile now. Yeah, when, when we know, and friend, I come anticipating on the way to church this morning, I come anticipating Jesus showing up at the house of God, and he has, and I say, thank you, Lord, amen, hallelujah, amen. Like I said, I got too excited in the vehicle coming here, so I got here 10 minutes earlier than I normally would because I was excited about coming to church. Lord, let me get there quick, and he did. I had to repent because I got there too quick. Hey man, I'm glad when Jesus comes by, he causes excitement. He, the blind man knew that he could heal him. The, uh, the blind man knew that uh, even though he couldn't see, see him, he could feel him, his presence about him, and he come to Jesus. Now look, you might come into church sometimes feeling down and low and depressed and anxious, but for some reason, <coughs> you got up and came to church. You might have come to church this morning out of necessity, i got to go. I don't feel bad about that. Don't feel bad about coming to church sometimes because you think, well, it's just what I need to do. But I guarantee you there ain't one of you here that's ever got up and come to church that when you left here you weren't glad you come. Amen? And what would you have missed? How many services have I missed before in my lifetime and decided, well, I'm just not going to go today. But guess what? Somebody testified to me the next day, man, we had a good service. And then you go to get paranoid thinking, well, I wonder if they'd have had that good a service if I'd have been there. And then some knothead thinks he's your friend, walk up, well, and you tell, they, tell, they, they, they say to you, man, we had a good service last night. I hate you missed it. I say, boy, I hate I missed it too. And then they look at you and say, well, you know what it says? When the hindrance is away, the spirit can can uh, the people can pray. And then you begin to think, and I wonder if that's so. No, you missed the blessing just because you weren't there. That, that's why. But guess what? Preacher has done it before himself. Well, I gotta go. And I've told this story probably a dozen times, but I like it. It it it, it gets a point across like the little like the man laying in the bed on Sunday morning and he's laying there asleep and, and uh, his wife comes there honey wake up we got to get ready to go to church I ain't going to church yeah you are a few minutes later she comes in there he ain't stirred man he's still laying there uh, you're going to have to hurry you better get up we got to go to church I ain't going to church well a few minutes later she comes in there again and says We've already going to miss Sunday school. You better get up. We've got to go to church. I ain't going to church. But you've got to go to church, honey. You're the pastor. <laughs> now, it ain't ever been quite that bad. But I'll tell you something. The devil work on me just the way as he works on you. And I woke up before thinking, Lord, I really, Lord, I just don't feel like it. Physically, mentally. Emotionally, there's something wrong. Oh, Lord, I just don't feel like it. But God, I'm looking for you there. And I'm not going to find, you're not going to be here if I'm supposed to be there. That's where you're going to be, so I'm going. And Brother Frank, I've walked in, I've walked in the pulpit sometimes been feeling pretty low. Now, I wasn't too low this morning, but I just, I, there's just a burden on my heart. God knows how to take care of those things. Boy, after Jesus shows up, he, he makes his promise real to me. And when he shows up on the scene, friend, it causes all the excitement in the world when I'm looking for him and he, he shows me that he's real. And friend, he'll do it for you. He'll do it for you just as well as he does for me. And if you, hey, you, you come to church looking for something, you'll get it. Now, that's exactly right. You'll get what you come to church looking for. 
you come looking for a blessing from God, you'll get it. If you come looking for that preacher to preach a dull sermon to you, he might do it. But I want to tell you something. If you come looking for Jesus, Jesus is here because you want, and thank God he'll show up and he'll bless you. When Jesus passes by, number three, the skeptics, they'll also be there. There's always the skeptics around any, around any crowd where Jesus is at. There's always some skeptics. Now these skeptics, they'll say like they said in verse number 48, and many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Many of them critics, I'll be quiet. He ain't hearing you. He ain't going to listen. You just be quiet. Just sit over and be quiet. And there was probably other skeptics around in the crowd said, ah, there ain't nothing to him. There might have been skept more skeptics of the blind man that said, oh, you've been blind all your life. You think this is going to change anything? See, that's the talk of the devil. I'm telling you what, when Jesus passes by, it'll cause some excitement and it will call the skeptics to, uh, to arise and say, well, there's nothing to it. But I'm telling you, friend, They'll say also this is not real, this is not nothing special. But I'm telling you, anytime Jesus comes by me, it's special and it's real. I've been around, I've been around false things. I've been around false teachers. I've been around people that, you know, that that might have had a good, you know, good reputation, but the Spirit of God just didn't bear witness. Now, did I go out telling all that? No. Somebody asked me, I can tell you. But I'll tell you something, when Jesus passes by, the skeptics have got to. Now, when, when Jesus passed by, blind Bartimaeus, he went to him, and Jesus healed him. That, that shut the mouths of all the skeptics. For a little bit anyway. Because they saw it right before their very eyes, what Jesus could do to someone that needed help, and he helped him. I'll tell you something, friend, if the skeptics ever tell you uh, you're in the situation you're in because that's the way you're always going to be. That's the way you always have been. And there's no hope for you. Let me tell you something. When Jesus passes by your way and God does something for you, you look the skeptics in the eyes and say, look what Jesus did. And I can imagine blind Bartimaeus when he got up from there, when he was seeing, I imagine him going through the crowd real excited saying, look what Jesus did for me. I see you. I look at you. I know what you look like. I've never seen this before. Look at the sky, how blue it is. Look at the trees, how green they are. Look at you, how ugly you are. Oh, he said, and I didn't even know what ugly was till I saw you. And he said, but look, and he began to see and he went through the crowd nobody could deny that he could see maybe there's a little humor in that but I don't know what he said the first time he started seeing things maybe he looked at himself and said good grief it's a wonder anybody ever gave you any money when you saw yourself in the reflection but, oh, but what he did Jesus met with him we went through the crowd the skeptic said be quiet but when Jesus done something for him he went away telling what Jesus had done for him. Let me ask you something. When you go to church and God does something for you, do you go away telling it, oh, Lord, blessed us at the church today. Amen. Do that and it'll cause others to want to see what Jesus is doing. Not only at church, but in your life, what Jesus is doing for you if you get excited about the Lord. The skeptics will have to, to flee. <clears throat> then last of all, when Jesus passes by, and I'm stopping, I'm not through, but I'm stopping. When Jesus passes by, verse number 49, and Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. When Jesus passes by, he brings comfort. Like I say, many people get anxious. Many people have anxiety attacks. Anybody ever had a, a panic attack or an anxiety attack? Be honest, it's all right. I had one once. I thought of dying. I mean, my heart was racing. I could not control my emotion. I, felt, I thought I am losing my mind. What little I had, it's going, and it's going fast. It disturbed my wife. 
And my wife called a nurse that, that we was good friends of with my cousin called Sandra. And my wife said, I don't know what to do with him. Said, He's a mess. That was more than usual. You know. I wasn't putting on, I wasn't playing. I just, I, was just, I don't know what was right. Don't, don't, still to this day, don't know what caused it. Don't know what, what but, uh, but it all hit me. Something all hit me at once. And she said, tell him. And it's right before church. She said, tell him to sit down and breathe deep and get something to drink and start getting plenty of oxygen he'll be all right. Well, I had no other choice. I sat down, I started breathing deep in just a few minutes. It was gone. The anxiety was gone. I don't know what caused that. But that's what you do. But I do know what helped me. It wasn't just what she said, but it was, it was my wife praying and me praying, and God brought comfort. Now, you may be sitting here and facing more problems than you can shake a stick at. And they're real, friend. I don't belittle people's problems. I know how real people's problems are. I know how what real suffering is. But I've never been suffering. I've never been in sorrow that when I called out to Jesus and he passed by my way, he didn't comfort me. Friend, it's wonderful to trust the comfort of the Lord. It's, it's wonderful to be able to tell Jesus, Lord, I got problems. And Jesus, the Holy Spirit of God, your comforter, will come to you and he will comfort you. I, know, I, I, I don't know what went on in the blind man's mind. But no doubt in the blind man's mind, he might have been thinking, he, he, he might have been thinking, you know, what if this really happened? I've been blind all these years. My life is, is, is never going to amount to anything. But I'm going to ask Jesus for help. And what Jesus said, be of good comfort. Boy, the greatest word you can ever hear is in your darkest hour. In your gloomiest time, and you cry out to the Lord, and He says, It's going to be all right. Hallelujah! It's going to be all right. No greater words can you hear from the Holy Spirit of God to comfort your heart than everything's going to be all right. Amen! It's going to be all right. And, friend, Jesus, the Holy Spirit of God has never lied to you. He always tells the truth. And when Jesus says it's going to be all right, it's going to be all right. And you can take courage. And you can gain strength from knowing whatever happens, it's going to be all right. Comfort from the Word of God. Now that's not all that happens when Jesus passes by, but I'm going to leave you with that this morning. May preach the rest of it, may not. But I'm glad for the comfort that Jesus brings when He passes by. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your good grace. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your blessings and your goodness and your kindness. Lord, most of all, I thank you for your presence at the house of God today. Lord, thank you for answering prayer. Lord, thank you for comforting our heart. Lord, I know somebody here needs the message today. Lord, somebody here may have a wayward loved one someone may be here this morning facing problems that they don't know any way around but God we're your children and you always take care of your children Lord whatever the issue may be in life that people need comfort I pray God you'd comfort hearts today Lord we know everything's going to be alright because you said it would Lord I pray that you just Help us to realize, God, we just look to Thee and look to Your comfort and Your direction and Your guidance. And, Father, You'll help us. Bless now in Jesus' name. Every head back.